Hello everybody, Manix here. This is going to be a knife review on the Benchmade 705 McHenry & Williams. This is a pass around knife. A friend of mine owns this and then she lent it over to Knife Girl Alley 5. Check her channel out, it's a really good knife channel. And then she lent that over to me. So I had this for about a little over a week. Been carrying it non-stop. Used it for just about all of my EDC tasks. I didn't want to go crazy with it because it's not my knife. But I am very familiar with the 154cm uh, blade steel it has. I've had it on the other Benchmates before. So let's get on with the specs first. Now they don't uh, make this knife anymore. It's been discontinued. Don't know when. I don't know what its MSRP used to be. I looked all over the internet. Could not find any information on that. But generally speaking, you get these used on forums. People tend to buy them for anywhere from like $100 to $150. Uh, that's what I see them go for. Used, by the way. So yeah, it's kind of a hefty price tag, I think. But uh, let's get on with the review. Blade length is 2.95 inches, overall length 6.75 inches, meaning the handle length is 3.8 inches. We have an axis lock right here, it is tip-up carry, which is swappable to the left side. Ambidextrous thumb studs, 154cm blade steel, which is a satin finish, flat grind, drop point, 2.7 ounces according to this website. But let's just see about that. It's funny because my scale sometimes gets different results from what the websites say. But sometimes it gets the exact same results that they're supposed to be. Here, zero. 2.87, my scale is saying. Huh. Different. Either way. So I would consider this a medium smaller folder. Medium small, not small, not medium. Somewhere in between. It's a really, really good size. It's a perfect, perfect EDC knife choice for me. Generally speaking, you know, smaller blades are what you need. Sometimes you only need like an inch of steel to actually perform your task. Very unlikely you'll need, you know, four or five inch blade or even 3.5 inch. Sometimes it's, that's a lot. Uh, you don't need that much most of the time for your task. Cutting, you know, packages, plastic wrap, zip ties, cardboard, you know, those like the usual stuff. You really don't need that much edge. And even this, you can consider too much edge, generally speaking. But I like the handle length. That's the biggest problem I have with the really teeny tiny knives, because I don't like it when I'm like, eh, my like, last two fingers are trying to hold on to something, and they're not. I have little control. This is a perfect, perfect size. Perfect EDC knife, because there's just enough to hold on to, so you have perfect control. But it's not overkill. It's not huge, either. And the blade's slim, too, so... It's very fast, again, lightweight, 2.8-ish ounces. I like how it's thicker. It's kind of wide, there's a lot to hold on to. I like hand-filling handles, not a huge fan of the slim stuff. Skeletonized steel liners in there. Some people tend to go crazy with the steel liners being skeletonized on knives. Like, why didn't they skeletonize them? They forgot. You end up saving, like, 0.15 ounces or so, if that, when you skeletonize a steel liner. It basically does very, very little, so it's not that big of a deal, but they did lighten it. Axis lock is perfect. It's probably my favorite locking mechanism if I had to pick. Very simple in the fact that you can let go of it. They let go of the friction of the blade. You can do this with it, of course. Very fun. Very fast. Strong. No complaints with the axis lock. Ambidextrous, like I said. I like the way it looks. Very simple, very versatile, elegant design. Very cool. Cool looking. I, I tend to like blades where... I, I like all kinds of knives, but I, have, I fancy the knives where your hand's actually not touching the blade at all. It's kind of cool looking, I think. I don't know, like, it's just touching the handle. But there's no thumb ramp or anything. Yeah, you consider that an upside, which it is, but, I, you know, at the same time, I kind of... There's something about it I just think is cool when I'm not touching the blade at all. Very comfortable, no complaints. If anything, maybe I want just a little more to hold on to, but then it becomes a bigger knife, and the whole idea behind this is that it's a small EDC knife, so... Milling right here basically doesn't do anything. Yeah, there's more traction than down here, but it's very little, and we also have some down here as well. It's cool looking. Backspacer, I really like backspacers a lot. It's really cool. They just seem more... I don't, I don't know, I like, I like the closed up. I don't like seeing like the blade through the pillars as much. But pocket clip's perfect. Perfect, simple, wide, rounded design. Uh, some people might not like how that's poking out of your pocket. I don't give a crap, honestly. It works for me. So lightweight, a lot to hold on to. Very, very good blade steel. Strong, smooth, fast. There's no complaints I have with this knife. Uh, the 154cm blade steel. You know, blade steel's a funny thing. Okay, so... <laughs> You can go to so many different websites and talk to so many so-called metallurgists on the line, and you can go to different uh, knife company websites, and you'll get so many different answers when it comes to how good a blade steel is and how it compares to that blade steel and this and that. This one's got more molybdenum, that one's got more vanadium, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, all of it means something, but what I'm saying is it's just... I feel like there's a lot of misinformation, and there's a lot of miscommunications, and there's a lot of variables people don't look at. There's heat treatment as well. So you can take a 154cm slab of steel, which doesn't really cost that much more, honestly speaking, from what I've heard. Anyway, I know there's going to be people who say other things, but from what I heard, the higher-end blade steels actually don't really cost that much more. It's just, you could take that, and then you could heat treat a crappy 440c steel better, and then it would be like a way better steel than the steel that's supposed to be better. 
if that makes any sense at all. But yeah, you know, blade steel, it's weird. From what I understand, 154cm is comparable to VG10. It's a little bit stronger, I think, but it's a trade-off. So when you make it a little stronger, it's less brittle, so the edge does not retain as well. But it's extremely close, extremely, extremely close to that blade steel, though. It's not like, oh crap, I hate 154cm, I want VG10. It's like, they're, they're, it's steel, they're very, very similar. They'll both retain an edge for a really long time. If you just keep your knives dropped and you take care of them, you're not going to notice a difference at all, unless you're just cutting 24-7 with that one knife. Some people just go crazy over what kind of blade steel it is, and yeah, the higher end blade steels do cost more than the cheaper ones, but it's it's not like a hundred dollar difference or anything like that. And honestly speaking, I know I'm, I'm going to get a lot of controversy, I'm going to make a lot of controversy when I say this, a lot of people are going to absolutely hate me for this, but... I feel like Benchmade and a lot of other knife companies, the higher end ones, they price their knives at those prices because people buy them at those prices. It has nothing to really do with, well, it costs what it costs for a reason. They could get away with selling them for way cheaper, way, 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 way cheaper, but they don't because they can't keep a lot of their knives in stock at the prices they put them at. So why would they lower their prices? There's no reason to. Honestly, that's one of the reasons I think their knives are really, really expensive because you can get knives that are very, very similar, if not the same as theirs for like a fifth of the price. There's like $25 knives out there that are comparable to a lot of their $100 folders. It's kind of crazy. And the other thing is they're made in the US. So it does cost more, that's true, but it's I don't see it being a $100 difference. But either way... Um, Really amazing, amazing EDC knife. Just perfect. Absolutely no complaints with it whatsoever. But it, I just think it costs too much. I think that's too expensive. But hey, if, if you really like the folder and you're like, oh, that's worth it to me. I like that blade still, like the way it looks. I love Benchmade. I like how it's made in the US. Yeah, more power to you. It's a great, great knife. It's really awesome. It's just, I would never, ever pay that much for this knife. Maybe it were like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, but 135, eh, a little high for me. But yeah, that is the Benchmade 705 McHenry Williams.